Hi everybody, this is uh, Dr. Jonathan Zelkin, board certified plastic surgeon. And this is Ozempic Face. Hi everybody, I already introduced myself and you've probably or possibly seen other videos of mine talking about non-surgical facial slimming and touting weight loss that's controlled is a great starting point in patients who are considering facial slimming but don't want surgery just yet. So in a video that I produced back in December, I was able to analyze my face before and after 7.4 pounds of weight loss that was motivated by lifestyle changes, dietary changes, and the diabetes drug metformin. Metformin's been around for a really, really long time and has not only anti-neoplastic potential, but cardiovascular risk benefit, weight loss potential benefit, uh, anti-aging potential benefit, and it's just something that I recommend to friends and family as a intelligent drug that should be monitored closely by your doctor, but may help you in terms of just overall well-being. Now, more recently, I think everybody, I was super late to this party, and as a doctor and a plastic surgeon, I should be ashamed of myself, but more recently, a series or a class of drugs designed initially for diabetes patients has gained all sorts of popularity and press uh, because of its benefits as a weight loss medication. These are called semaglutide medications, and you may have heard of Ozempic or um, Monjora or Wigovi. I happen to be prescribed Ozempic, and I was prescribed this medication back in November, completely unaware that there was any kind of shortage of it. This has become a little bit more uh, manifest in the news and the potential risks of taking this medication have uh, ethical um, considerations as well. But back then I was started on a homeopathic dose of this medication, meaning like 0.25 milligrams, which is far less than a treatment or therapeutic dose for a diabetic patient. And a single one milligram pen or a three milligram pen was designed to last up to six to 12 months. So it's really, you know, a medication that was not prescribed for its intended purpose, but was really designed to help me lose weight. Because despite my thin face, I've always been overweight. Since residency, I was as high as 192 pounds with a BMI of 27. Now, it's not heading in the right direction when you have a family history of cardiovascular disease and high cholesterol. And I touched on that in my last video. But needless to say, it took about a month of taking the medication to lose 10 pounds and for people to notice that I was looking more slender. And the feedback initially was very positive. People would look at me and say, you, you, you look more physically fit, you look healthier. And frankly, I did. I felt more physically fit. I didn't rely on as many uh, ibuprofen tablets per day. Um, and I just felt more nimble, frankly. I had better energy, I slept better. It seemed like this combination of medications was almost a wonder drug despite the real issues of like constipation and diarrhea. Which I'll spare you from those details today. But one of the unforeseen side effects that I don't like is the change that it had on my facial appearance. And it took about 20 pounds of weight loss, which only took six weeks to achieve. For people to say, not so nice things to me. And at first it was neighbors and friends and family who would say like, e either you look like a chemo patient or you look like you have something. This not nice things. And I took it sort of lightly because I felt that I looked better and I felt better period. And it was kind of worth it to me. But after about 30 pounds of weight loss, I did achieve my target BMI of 23, which is in a healthy range. Um, and I feel better and I want to keep it where it is now. But this comes at the price of so-called Ozempic face. Ozempic face or Monjora face or Wigovi face or you name it, medication face is nothing new. It's not something that the medication directly causes. It is a side effect of rapid weight loss that impacts your face in a noticeable way to people around you. And, and it tends to be quick. And so even though the changes are not that drastic if you do before or after comparisons, people who know you will see a difference. And that is what we call 
ozempic face. It's a phenomenon, not a disease. If you wanna try and qualify the disease, we can call it facial fat wasting, which is usually a harbinger of some sort of medical condition. And so I think the distinction between ozempic face and facial wasting uh, should be uh, considered because the treatment for both may be the same, but the underlying issues associated with both are different. Ozempic face is something that we do to ourself. It is a price that we pay for medically induced weight loss. Um, and for some it may be worth it and for others it's not. Fortunately, if you or somebody you know has suffers from ozempic face, fear not, there are tons of treatments. Um, we know and I've talked about this in previous videos that facial fat, you know, the subcutaneous fat compartments of your face are associated with youth and beauty. And so fat loss in the face typically is associated with aging and loss of beauty, especially in women. So if you feel that these changes associated with rapid weight loss are unfavorable to you, and if you're like me and you already had a slender face and a long face, it's not flattering, or if you are aging and you feel like this is prematurely, you know, rapidly aging your face, uh, do know that if you intend to keep your weight stable, we've been treating this condition for years, either by facelifts or fat grafting or volumization of the face in any way. Of course, this new ozempic face deserves special consideration, both medical and ethical. Medical considerations should, should involve weight stability. Weight should be stable before any elective cosmetic procedure or surgery, and you should be healthy enough to be able to have the nutritional reserves to heal from any elective surgery. So that's one thing. The other thing is if we elect to do fat transfer from any body part to your face to revolumize your face, then you go on and regain your weight back then you're gonna be doubly volumized in these areas and it may not look good. So we should take more consideration to not volumizing the face if we're treating for ozempic face um, or Manjura face or Wigobi face, you name it face. Um, but overall, I think that people should be aware that this is a predictable side effect of rapid weight loss. They shouldn't be afraid of it. If they want the results of these medications and to continue these, but they don't like the shape of their face or how their face looks, we have treatments for it, and we're plastic surgeons, um, but I do think it deserves some special attention. From an ethical standpoint, I've become aware that Manjura and Wigovi and Ozempic may be in short supply because they are so popular amongst everybody, apparently. <laughs> Again, I was late to the game. Um, and that makes the supply demand curve a little bit imbalanced. And so it's not only expensive, but it may not be available now for people who actually need it for diabetes, what it's intended for. And so do keep that in mind if you are considering and initiating a course of Ozempic. I do uh, maintain my strong opinion about metformin. I think that is a good anti-aging medication that also has weight loss potential, perhaps not as drastic, and that is the medication that I continue to be on. So if you have any thoughts on this or you wish to educate me further or discuss this further, please turn your notifications on, subscribe, and leave your comments below. Thank you so much.